Hello everyone, welcome back to Park Tech, welcome back to campaign mode, and today we're going to play Batavia K. We're going to get started with this one. Um, I do remember quite enjoying this one before when I played through the game many years ago when I first got it. Um, so the the introduction here reads, a lonely island steeped in legends. The previous owner built a dueling coaster here, but not much else. Finish what they started and turn this mysterious island into a tourist attraction. So the goals we've got are to have an experience rating of 80%, 1,000 guests in the park, so quite a high uh, guest count there we're looking for, and an operating profit of at least 5,000 a month. That's going to be quite challenging, I think, and especially that we want to do it by the end of July year three for the non-optional goals. So we'll see how we get on with this one. Let's take a look at the map. Here we are then in the Batavia K map. Let's take a look at it from afar. Uh, we've got this nice big island, plenty of space to build on here. Um, even almost an overwhelming amount of space, sort of similar to Adventure Island. I think we're going to have to start by blocking off some of the paths. Um, you can see that already. That you know we're going to, I think, just start with a few rides around here, and then once things start getting popular, we'll open it up a bit more. This is really cool dueling coaster in the middle. Not something I've really seen that much in real life before. Steel dueling coaster like that. Um, it's just a little place we can watch it go around. Really, really excellent design on this one. Um, pretty much stays, both trains stay right next to each other throughout the whole layout. Yeah, I really like the design of that. I think it'll be a really nice centerpiece uh, to, to build the whole park around. I think we could do something similar to Archipelago Adventures here and build up a bit of a, a mountain type structure um, where the lift hill and the drop are if we can get enough um, if we can get enough money together to, to do that. I think one thing that I would actually like to do as well is maybe have a little play around see if I can do something with this drop because I don't like the way it's the same sort of the same drop as the lift hill if that makes sense um, I think uh, it's, you know it's the same level of steepness I think we need a steeper drop there so that might be something to look at pop it on pause again so that we don't run out of time until December year 3 for this one so the ride selection we've got then um, a good selection of flat rides there loads to work with there and a few thrill rides as well, go-karts, I haven't done any of them yet I don't think in the playthrough, uh, Gravitron, Swinging Ship and Wipeout, and the coasters, we've only got to the Junior, Steel and Wild Mouse, so straight away I'm going to put some research on the coasters, because I think we really need to build up the coaster count in this park if we want to make lots and lots of money. Uh, no transport rides and a couple of water rides there as well to work with. Scenery wise, what have we got? Absolutely nothing. Generic and spooky, that's it. Um, I'm not really 100% sure what I'm going to do for this map, but I sort of had a Transylvania type theme in mind, which is something that I've done before. Uh, not quite sure how that would work out for this one, but yeah, it's just something I've got in mind. But it's such a big park that I think. We should probably do something again like we did for Adventure Island where we had several different theme lands because um, we've got plenty of room to, to do something like that. But let's get into the time lapse and see what we can do. What I've decided to do then is put in some footage of the first failed attempt at this map. And what you can see me building here is a Transylvanian style architecture building. Um, which I just took from a reference image and used it as the park entrance. And while I think there's nothing particularly wrong with it, I just wasn't feeling the way that this uh, map was starting out. And I decided to ditch the whole attempt. I also built this launched coaster at the back of the park, um, which I just wasn't happy with the layout for either. I just didn't like the way it looked. So we scrapped that and started again. And uh, here you can see the proper attempt. Now, first and foremost, I must apologise um, if you can hear 
I've got a bit of a sort of hoarse throat in this one. Um, I've got a rather sore throat. I've had it for over a week now. It's not getting any better. So I just thought I'd crack on and do the commentary anyway. So I do apologise if that affects your viewing. You could always just mute me and watch the video. <laughs> I'm sure that's what a lot of people would probably do anyway. Um, so the first thing you can see me build there then is a uh, wild mouse coaster. And the reason for building that is basically just to get some more money coming in because one of the main goals here is to get £5,000 a month for operating profit. Uh, but we put the dueling coasters up to £15 each per ride, so that brings in £30 sort of every time. Um, you know, for every person that fills the seats on those ones. So, really, that gives us a, a good base to start building up the start on the theming of the park and sort of start to get a look together of how we want things to be. And like I said, the theme for this one, I want a sort of Transylvanian theme. I also decided it's going to be a nice autumn theme, so um, jumping on the bandwagon <laughs> because I'm sure there's been lots of nice, well, I've seen a couple of the nice autumn builds um, come out over the last month or so, and we're probably a little bit late for this because by the time it gets released, we'll be to mid to late uh, November. But sod it, I like the way it looks, um, and I really wanted to do something with this style of theming. So that's what we go for. One problem with this map is you don't get very much decoration unlocked at the start. So after researching a couple of coasters, I also started putting some of the research onto, well, all of the research onto decorations so that we can try and get some brick walls because that's ideally what I was looking for um, for this sort of main street. We don't have any brick walls unlocked at the moment. Um, we've just got generic theming and halloween -y theming, which isn't exactly sort of what we're going for, but you know how it is. We sort of make do with the pieces we've got. Um, and if I can get the bases down, then we can always go back and sort of add to the theming later on. This is a trick that I've done before in a campaign map, which is quite good to do in vanilla, just using the... Um, we call them like dormer pieces, I guess, to make a, a more, what's the word, steep sort of uh, roof incline there, and I think that works quite nicely. Um, you have to sort of blend it in a bit with the with the pillars and stuff, because it hangs over the edge a bit, but yeah, I think it works out quite nicely. Um, here I end up putting in a big uh, arch. Still not entirely sure what I think of how that looks on the front of that building, but um, I think we can sort of make it work. We also hide in some customizable shops in there, just selling some food and souvenirs and stuff like that. So everything that people need is right there at the front of the park. And uh, that's pretty much that building complete, bar a couple of sort of lamps and stuff like that. And um, yeah, we add some, some other sort of little details to it as well. Um, just again to build up that architecture again almost in sort of a like Victorian style that we're going for here um, this is just from a very very quick Google sort of search for Romanian architecture and uh, what we come up with so it's not necessarily Transylvania but it's sort of around that area I found it quite difficult to know what to do with this middle building and um, just wanted something obviously a bit different so we've got different roof color different completely different roof style um, but it looked sort of rather big and it was difficult to to sort of join in to the theming. It looks a bit stuck out, so I had to play them out quite a bit to um, change it up to look nice and blend in. But using some sort of curved borders and stuff, we managed to get something together that looks quite nice in the end with that one. And then the end building is a sort of more plain and boring looking one so I just end up using it as part toilet block and part queue for the chair swing behind it and yeah I think that works out quite fine so the, the two buildings on either side have got a similar style and then the one in the middle is slightly different um, and yeah I'm quite happy with this facade it's sort of given me a good idea of how the park's going to look but it really starts to come together once we get the foliage in and you can see how it's looking with these um, with these nice autumn colours um, on the trees that we get that we put in here, also doing a bit of uh, roof texturing there. You can see 
Unfortunately, I think I've cut out the bit of footage where I'm actually placing all the foliage in there, so you just see it sort of um, appear. <laughs> and we skip straight to building the, the sort of theming almost for the carousel, which I think I'm going to leave sort of uncovered. I'm not too sure about these little buildings that I've made for the entrance and exit for it, though. I'm not too keen on how they look made out of dormers there. Uh, it's something different, but I don't know if we'll be keeping that or just changing it to something a bit more generic that blends in a bit better. Because um, I think it looks rather odd. I'm not too too sure if I like it or not. And then really we're just doing some custom fences there around the edge of the carousel and um, adding in some foliage and planting and stuff like that. So yeah, that's pretty much it for the sort of main street and now at least we've got some sort of idea of what the theme of the park is going to be, which I'm quite pleased about. Um, so we're going to move on to the first coaster for the park. And I'd unlocked this time, I'd unlocked the wing coaster. So I thought that would be quite a good one to start with. Um, and for the placement here, I wanted it quite near the front of the park. So I put it straight, um, put the station right next to the lift hill for the dueling coasters and put the launch running underneath that lift hill straight into the first element. And um, yeah, we just sort of try and meander in and out of the different um, other pieces of track and scenery um, around until we get a layout. But, that I'm, pretty ha uh, that I'm pretty happy with. But to be honest, I think I'm going to completely <laughs> take this down and redo it and put it somewhere else because I'm not happy with the way the layout looks now at all. It's um, It just looks like it's been stuck over everything else. It doesn't really have its own space. It, it just doesn't look right there. Um, so I think that's something that I'm going to go back to. But that might be a case of going back um, and changing that once we've met the park goals because now I really want to concentrate on uh, beating the campaign before we start making everything look nice um, but that's something that I'll have to sort of have a look at when we go into the live portion in just a sec um, we're just sort of finishing off this layout I think it's got about five or six inversions there and it does run quite nicely actually um, it is quite a good layout from a gameplay perspective but like I say I just couldn't get it to blend in nicely with the area I'm not happy with how it goes over the carousel there either um, so yeah I, th I think we're gonna we're gonna re revisit that at a later stage but let's get into the live portion now Welcome back to the live portion then. Um, we've had a little bit of a problem here with the, with the shops for some reason. Um, I think the hauler couldn't get to them, but I think I fixed that now. So if we remove the scenery, it looks like. Hmm, can't see why they couldn't get to them anyway, to be honest, unless they're just too tired and they can't be bothered to work. Uh, so we need a staff room, really. doors there we've got there's no reason that they can let's see if we put a new hauler in if they if they work straight away yes yeah, so you're just being lazy right so <laughs> this is really bad and um, I wouldn't recommend any employer actually do this but we're gonna get rid of the old ones or the one that's not working just to save having to put a staff room in right now um, we will put a staff room in soon, but it's just not right on the priorities list at the moment. Um, our park rating isn't great. Cleanliness are not too happy about, so maybe if we get a couple more janitors there. I believe we've got sort of bathrooms. Yeah, we've got one there and one there, so that should be enough. Um, I've placed plenty of trash cans as well, plenty of bins. So we should be alright for everything like that. Um, so what have we got? We've got until July year 3. So we've got another in-game year 
to get it up to five grand. It's on 2,224. Um, so we need to really get another coaster in. But we've got plenty of money and we're making plenty of money in there. I've also recolored these two coasters. Um, I think they'll be getting changed back. It's because I didn't want them to clash too much with the with the wing coaster but now that we're moving the wing coaster that shouldn't matter so I'm just going to put them back to roughly sort of what they were before so what have we got then we've got to work with absolutely nothing so I'm going to have to put research onto coasters um, and I think we'll just get some thrill rides in next and even some gentle rides because we need a thousand guests as well and we're very very far off that I'm going to slowly sort of open the park up further bit by bit and see if that works uh, we do have some previous auto saves as well so all is not lost if, um, if I fail this time so let's get back into the time lapse first thing that we did then was put in some new rides uh, just to try and get the guest numbers up um, as we work towards these goals. So I put in a teacups ride and a pirate ship, um, some more gentle rides, some more family type rides in this area um, next to the wild mouse which would I guess would be a family coaster as well. Uh, you see that I reinstate a wipeout down there that I think I removed when I was doing the wing coaster layout. Um, and we put in that double Ferris wheel, which I think is the first time I've ever actually placed this ride down in the game. It's the first time I've ever used it. It's not my favourite looking ride in the game, but um, it's something different. Um, we'll uh, we'll go back to all these rides later and try and theme them up nicely. I then stuck a staff room in uh, just there behind the dodgems where the uh, depot is. I realised you can't delete any of the scenery there because I was trying to link up some of the paths. Uh, but then later on I also realised that the staff pathing goes underground in this one so it's all sorted anyway so that's not a problem so we move on to the next coaster for the park then and i'm building the b&m flawless coaster and i took absolutely ages on this layout you might not quite see how long it took me because obviously in the time lapse uh, things are a lot quicker um, i kind of wanted a diagonal lift hill um, to add a bit of variation and make it look a little less gridded but in the end just had to settle for a normal straight lift hill because I just couldn't get it in the sort of space that I wanted with the with the diagonal layer. I just couldn't make it work. Um, I found it quite hard to build a nice realistic-ish looking layout for this one. Um, still not sort of 100% with it, but I might go back and have another look at it later on. Uh, here you can see my sort of many failed attempts at the diagonal layout there. Or we just go into the uh, the normal the sort of normal straight uh, lift hill into a drop um, and then the first sort of elements that we're going to have here is a cobra roll into a uh, loop and then straight into the brake run so quite a short sort of first half of the coaster layout um, again try to get it to fit in quite a small sort of blueprint here so that we've got room later on to move the wing coaster and possibly put another coaster over at the back of the park um, which we may need to meet the park goals I'm not too sure yet um, but we're just gonna sort of build um, build this coaster in this space I wanted a corkscrew going over the path as well uh, to finish the layout on so we work that in as well but you'll actually see um, the the goals get met very quickly in a minute I did skip quite a bit of um, the waiting around and advertising and just micromanaging that I did to win the goals I had to go back several times to previous auto saves because um, I failed them several times before sort of July year three to get that second coin um, but in the end as you can see now I have completed the goals and we can now concentrate on theming up this map nicely so I'll catch you over in the next live portion here we are then it's always nice to get the 
goals completed for these campaigns and then we can concentrate on making the park look nice so this is what we've got so far we've got three uh, coasters that I've built um, along with the jeweling coasters that already come with the map um, and I think this will be enough coasters for the park once we get the wing coaster uh, moved over to the back Probably with an entirely new layout, I think things will start to look a lot better. Um, you'll notice that we've put in a super looper instead of the G lock. This is just because of one of the auto saves I had to go back to a different ride research basically. So I place that in instead to meet that guest count. It was to drop as well, but it was quite difficult to actually get the thousand guests. That was much harder than the operating profit which I found quite easy to actually do in the end um, and the experiences rating because that's based on reviews that people leave when they leave the park as you can see now it's on 80 percent yeah keeping it up high like that is um, quite a challenge so really we want to try and make the rest of the park look something like this because um, it's such a big park I think we're going to have to think of some sort of variations of themes as well so have some mini themed areas I'm thinking this could be like some sort of harbour area or something like that um, I'm still not crazy about the layout for this one uh, to be honest it's it looks better than the wing coast put it that way it might look alright once we've done some theming around it and stuff but yeah I don't know I'm gonna probably the first thing I'm gonna do is move the wing coaster over here and then uh, after that we'll see we'll see how everything looks and take it from there so we'll see you back over in the next and final time lapse. Welcome to the third and final time lapse then for Batavia K. Um, and in this one, obviously, we're theming up the rest of the park. Um, I do apologise for the length of this video. I got a bit carried away. Um, but also, it's such a big park to fill and to theme up that it just um, it really did take quite a long time, even with bits cut out of the time lapse. Um, it still took ages to finish. So you can see the first thing that we did then is we moved the flawless coaster over to the back of the park. That's going to be in the sort of newer area, um, newer themed area of the park, which you'll sort of find out more about later on in the video. Um, and then I deleted the wing coaster and completely started it from scratch again with a new layout. Um, as I said before, I wasn't happy with the layout, so I wanted to try something completely different. And I felt that this would be um, this area here would give me much more room to work on it. And so um, we start the layoff, uh, sorry, the layout off quite similar to the one that was in before, with a launch track straight into a Immelman or whatever it is, reverse dive loop um, into a sort of corkscrew into another dive loop um, and then another series of inversions it's um, sort of a medium length layout I guess I didn't want it too long didn't want it too short either just wanted to make good use of the space and have a nice looking layout and in the end I'm much happier with the layout that we um, ended up with compared to the first one and it doesn't sort of invade the space of the other areas of the park this is quite a lot we're going to do with that middle section which you will see again later on in the video just um, modifying the sort of station and brake run for this flawless coaster as well now that I had more space to work with I was able to make it look a little bit more realistic there and then we just build a queue line that goes over the, um, the first sort of section of coaster track there next thing that I work on then is this area where the wing coaster station is and what we're going for here is a sort of harbour themed area and um, it's again sort of based on reference images from Romanian type theming um, I took inspiration from here so it's, it's maybe slightly more modern this area but um, a little bit run down as well is the idea of it and so we try and make the building look kind of realistic and um, the the wing coaster sort of brake run goes through this station uh, through this building as well um, just because of the height of it and how it all fitted into the area 
um, and it also becomes a food building as well with some customizable shops there selling berries food and drink um, and then I make the sort of wooden the wooden path area into a small sort of pier coming out onto the water there we do as well change the color of the water for the whole map um, which I'm really happy with because it looks a lot better and um, just the generic one I really like changing the watercolor in in Parkitect I think that was a nice feature that they added I think that come with the blooms and blooms uh, DLC when they put that one in um, yeah it just sort of makes everything look a bit more interesting and here I'm just adding some what would you call those I suppose support work really to the harbour area and changing some of the fencing around there as well and all in all yeah I think this sort of area comes together quite well I do cut bits and bobs out of the build here um, because it did take quite a long time and again I didn't want this video to be too long so I do apologise for the sort of chopped out bits but we do have to keep the keep the length of the video in mind when doing the builds so I put a transfer track in there it's not realistic or believable at all because there probably wouldn't be enough room for these wide wing coaster trains but you know we, we just had to <laughs> do it the best we could I guess and um, use our imagination a bit for this one so yeah with the uh, limited space that we've got there as well but I think that all worked out fine and then I just add some foliage to this area as well I've started um, putting more sort of greenery in this area so that it's not all just orange and red trees everywhere um, and although maybe it's not the most realistic to have uh, trees that aren't quite as dead you do see it sometimes you see some trees that don't lo lose their sort of color quite as much um, in an autumn scene like this so moving on to the station for the wing coaster and I think I must have forgot to hit record actually for some of this bit you can see a load of shipping containers um, are now placed over the station and the station's almost complete um, other than that it's just a very basic structure this is to sort of make it look like it's a working shipyard that's what we end up calling the wing coaster as well it's uh, called shipyard which isn't the most inventive name but I think it's fine you know <laughs> a lot of the time I don't even get around to renaming the coasters anyway in these builds so yeah just finishing off the um, sort of shipping containers there and we build a big crane as well but I cut most of the footage out of that too because it took absolutely ages to build uh, but really to be honest this is the harbour that could be anywhere it just sort of fitted in to this park and gave us another different theme to work with and yeah I think um, I'm really happy actually with how this area looked because it's a nice sort of contrast to the entrance area and the, the main plaza that we've got in the park already so yeah you can see the crane going in there um, all made with basic shapes and pillars and stuff like that um, took me absolutely ages to do but I think it was worth it I'm happy with how it turned out would have been nice to use some diagonal borders um, to um, to support the crane with but that probably would have required construction anarchy or something like that because it's not on grid um, so the borders just wouldn't go into the place that I'd have needed them to go into and then we put a shipping container hanging off the end of the crane as well just to add um, a bit of sort of give, give the crane a bit of purpose <laughs> again it's not that realistic the way it's done but that's the best that I could think of how to do it in vanilla um, and yeah I think it's fine it's believable enough for you know a bit of fake theming that we put in there and the last thing then that I work on for this coaster is a nice sort of support section for the launch track um, which I think just adds a nice little detail there I did it with borders um, and corny pieces or whatever they're called I probably could have done it with those um, wall sets again in the booms and blooms pack I can't think what you'd call them really but the 
the sort of support work wall pieces that came in that pack. Um, but yeah, it works fine with borders. So that's the uh, wing coaster complete. And moving on to just filling in this area a bit, I just built um, a sort of rundown type building from a from a reference image that I saw, which was located somewhere in Romania. Um, and I'm adding all these support pieces in from the sort of western set um, just to sort of imitate scaffolding. We'd also add some scaffolding to the edge of this building um, as well as a load of foliage to make it look like it's overgrown and sort of in process of renovation but that's all part of the theming um, and I think it looks quite nice just to make it more interesting than a standard building with standard windows um, sometimes I do get stuck in a bit of a rut with the limited sort of um, pieces that we have in the vanilla game so I have to get creative and think of how I can do different uh, slightly different themes and add slightly different details to each of my buildings especially when we're doing a big part like this so you can see how that all works out there um, and I think that just fills in this area of the park nicely and covers up the depot that was originally there behind it obviously it's still there you can't get rid of that and you can't build over it because it's out of the park boundaries but the guests from guest level you're not going to see that um, so I think that's fine to just have it like that obviously everything was originally built in a different style of theming to what I'm working on in this build next then we work on which is uh, probably my favorite part of the park this is the weenie or the centerpiece um, you will see this when you're walking down that small main street it will be the first thing you see as you enter the park so I wanted it to be bold I wanted it to make a statement and I wanted this to be very much Transylvanian themed and um, so we're copying pretty much a reference image of a big Transylvanian castle um, which is sort of known as uh, being Dracula's castle I believe um, it's not exactly the same you know it's not a carbon copy but I'm using a lot of elements from that building if you just google Dracula's castle I'm pretty sure it comes up with something like that um, I'm not sure exactly what I googled to find it but this is something that I've wanted to recreate in the game for quite a long time anyway and I felt that this style of theming I'm going for in this campaign map is perfect for it so I'm doing loads of little detailing here and I've used a trick um, using the weight the basic shape sorry to allow more custom building with the windows so I can have a sunken in window there made from various different pieces um, which is quite fun and then making the trims with adventure borders and some adventure details there sunken in as well it's nice when you can sort of use stuff off grid um, for smaller details like that and then you can just blueprint it and copy and paste it across everywhere to um, place it on grid to say you keep repeating building the same thing over and over again because it is frustrating sometimes but things completely off grid um, and then I had to work out what to do with this round section because I couldn't just put the normal uh, details in like I've done for everywhere else so in the end we just leave that blank with a uh, with another basic shape in there I believe to to sort of fill in the trim section there um, apologies if you can hear my phone go off in the background there um, it's just going to have to stay as it is um, I don't know how clearly you can sort of hear that in the video we'll find out afterwards I guess when I do the editing but yeah I'm, I'm not uh, going to fuss too much about that so I'm sort of building this one from the ground up you can see here I um, I actually had quite a bit of struggle there to try and think how to do this curved window and then I found that we have a piece in game anyway that does it so I just layered that with a load of other windows and borders um, and then it used a bench uh, um, borders for for all the trim work on the front of the building and I think that looks really nice um, what I like about them adventure borders is they've got a sort of shiny texture so it adds a slightly different texture to your buildings makes them look a little bit less bland and then as we sort of build up 
and up with this building and build it more vertical. I like how it looks, but unfortunately I also <laughs> get Chinese theatre vibes from Hollywood Boulevard, um, which is not at all what I was going for. Um, but it almost does look a bit like that building. So it's, <laughs> it's almost something that I could probably copy and paste and um, and put in my park when I play through either Pagoda Valley or Sakura Gardens. But um, hopefully it gives off more of a Transylvanian castle look than a Chinese theatre look. But now that I've said that, you probably won't be able to get it out of your head. So I've probably ruined it for everyone, so I'm sorry about that. But all, uh, either way, this um, I'm, I'm pretty proud of this building, I like how it looks um, and I do think it's a really really good centre sort of focus point for the park um, and it's probably the thing that I spent the most time on, I spent um, probably a good 6-7 hours alone just on this building. Um, do I think it's worth it? Yes I do. <laughs> <laughs> you know me, I like to really sort of detail things um, and get creative with it. And the good thing is in this uh, campaign map, once the goals were met, we've got enough coasters and rides in the park that the money just keeps coming in. So we build up to about 150 grand by the end of the playthrough. Um, so there's more than enough money in the pot to do whatever I want really with this map, which makes things a bit easier. Here you can see I'm just struggling to get some uh, vertical windows in there um, and build the sort of centre of the building. Uh, another interesting thing here is the coaster going through the uh, the building. As you can see, I changed the track colours about 10 times for these coasters. I think I went back once to the original colours. Um, but then once this building was in place, I really liked the way that the sort of burgundy and the almost gold colour look um, in like going through the building. I think that them colours just work really well together. So it's a happy accident, but I'm really glad with how it looked in the end as well. You can also see that I've got the train sort of parts there just to make sure that they're fine for the clearance. Um, whilst I've got the game in pause mode there. Because it is quite a tight gap for them to get through. And... Um, on the sort of the back end of this when they come out of that um, sort of tunnel section I have to add some fog effects just to hide some of the more backstagey bits that I don't really want um, visible I don't really want to see this building is only really um, to be seen from the front and a bit from the sides and I cover as much up as I can with foliage and stuff to save me building um, four different facades all the way around because that really would have been too big a job for this map. Here I'm using some of the letters, some of the fonts rather, or the text tool even, <laughs> getting there in the end, um, for a decoration piece on the front of the building. <laughs> I think that's probably um, the thing that gives it the Chinese fear to look, but it, it works quite well for this purpose. And to be honest, it's given me some ideas for different sort of things that I can do when I do get through to the uh, more Asian themed parts later on in the playthrough. So yeah, it's it's not a massive loss if it, if it looks a bit too much like a Chinese theatre. Um, I think it's mainly the colours and uh, building styles that I'm using here. But again, you can see this is very much based on Dracula's uh, castle if you do a Google search for that. So now we're working on this rounded tower as well and I decided to make it mainly out of custom shapes and um, just put some domes, some very simple domes on the top there as well and I think that works absolutely fine and it was actually quite easy to do in the end. So that works out, yeah that all works out well. Um, and then we're moving on to the sides so we have this sort of little outdoor section um, that gets put in to the right hand side here um, which is just a little bit of path work and some fences nothing too crazy there just um, blueprinting some windows across before I 
get to that. Um, I do jump around quite a bit on this building and think, oh, what do I need to do next? Um, it's always quite overwhelming when you're doing something of this scale because there's so much to it and you don't want any parts of the building looking too bland but also you don't want the whole thing looking too busy uh, because then your eyes just don't know where to look um, so you need a good balance so that's why there's some sort of more plain sections of the building as well um, again just using those um, special window pieces to create a big window on the front there um, yeah that's quite an easy trick to do to be honest and I think it turns out quite well and then we're starting to work on the side as well so the good thing is quite a lot of the stuff at the top can be covered up because it's not going to be seen by guests uh, by, by the guests walking around the park so what we can also do is just stick a big grey roof on the top and um, yeah it's just like a real theme park it's a big facade um, on top of a show building basically and towards the end of the build of this building I did make the crazy decision that I actually wanted to give the whole thing a purpose um, currently I think it just has like one candy shop in it um, and I thought no I actually want to make this into a ride so although I don't do it to the best of my ability because I should have really designed it around a ride in the first place um, it does end up becoming a haunted mansion ride which I think is quite sort of on theme for this park um, although it's not specifically a Halloween build or anything like that because we're well past Halloween now um, at time of recording and at time of release for the video um, there are some small sort of Halloween-y elements to the park which you will see me put in in a bit and yeah I think that's fine because like I say you know it's, it's, it's not a Halloween build but we've just gone past that time of year and when I was working on it it was sort of that time of year I guess so yeah here yeah, then I'm just making a path, uh, pathway up to the up to the building itself so that guests can actually get up here this wasn't intentional in the first place it's just going to be a scenery piece like i said but um, i'm glad i did this because i think it works quite well it looks really nice and adding some rock work and foliage there as well to theme it in nicely with the area um, i make it absolutely crowded with rocks but i think that sort of covers up the really sort of bland um, ground texture going up the hill to to this building and yeah I'm pretty pleased with how that looks um, and then at this point we move on sorry there's a little bit of uh, overlap there with the video from from one section to the other that wasn't intentional that was just my poor <laughs> editing skills when I placed it into the software but it's fine it's done now so working on the final um, pillar I guess for the final um, the final tower that's the word I'm looking for for the building and we do four clock faces one on each side and then use some basic shapes to make them look more interesting and again these are quite good because I can just do it once and blueprint it across and that all works out fine you can see there was my original intention of having just one shop in there so that guests have a reason to go up there um, but in the end I changed my mind about that um, like I've already said so you'll see that in a bit so here we're adding the the detailing for the clock and yeah this was really really simple to do actually just using a few basic shapes and um, yeah I think it adds a nice sort of bit of detailing to the top of this tower it's also quite a fun trick to use to um, to what would you call them roof pieces um, pyramid shape pieces I guess I can't think of the word two pyramid pieces sort of layered on top of each other um, just to add a little bit more detailing and give the roof a bit more definition rather than just being sort of plain and standard um, you know pyramid shaped roof um, 
and then we're adding those same red trims in to the tower section as well um, I'm sorry if you can sort of hear my throat go a bit dry there um, it's just from talking so long I'm just going to grab a sip of drink so now we're doing the side of the buildings the last bit that you'll see really because everything else is going to be obscured by trees and I keep that much more simple so again it's not too um, overwhelming to look at and there's not too much that I need to build there you can see the roof's gone on now as well just a plain grey concrete well not concrete but a plain sort of grey tile roof and um, then we add a few lanterns on give it some nice lighting as well and you can see there's some lovely orange sort of um, autumn trees there in front of the building as well and I think all in all it's just a really nice composition and um, the foliage really complements this building as well and yeah it's something quite different as well um, to a lot of the sort of styles that I try in these playthroughs um, a little bit more complicated maybe than some of the stuff I've done before but yeah I think it works out pretty well and uh, now you can see the haunted mansion ride going in because i'd already built this show building there's just absolutely no room for it whatsoever um, so it's not the most inspiring layout but i don't think that matters because you can't really see it unless you do a sort of scenery cutaway view um, but i did want this bit to be visible where it does this little turnaround here um, and i get the um, eventually i get the the cars to face out the window so as you're riding around in it you'll get a nice view out of the park and from ground level guests might even be able to see the cars sort of um, going past the window there I think that's quite a cool look so we leave that window a little bit more open than the other ones just so that that can be seen nicely and we also have an outside section at the back here which is a very very um, standard spooky themed little cemetery out the back um, with some sort of Halloweeny trees and stuff that just fit nicely so that's the tiny sort of bit of Halloween theming that we have in the park but it's not a focal point and it's not that visible or not really that noticeable as well I just think it's something that this ride needed um, so that the guests get to see some cool theming as they go around as well if this were a real ride or even if it was in Planet Coaster obviously the inside would be all themed up to a haunted mansion um, maybe a slightly different sort of themed haunted mansion as this building is quite different but um, we don't need to worry about that obviously because we don't see it in Parkitect and yeah it was quite difficult to get the queue line and the path and everything linked up to this as well with the limited space we had so I did have to sort of make some adjustments to the building as well and I had to add a little bit more theming to the outside of the building where it could be visible from the guests on the ride there as well at the back um, but again we cover a lot of this up with foliage so it's um, it's not sort of screaming Halloween in your face like I said and that's that building complete and we move on to the wild mouse station really wasn't sure what to do for this one so I just found another sort of um, Romanian style build and um, style architecture that worked quite well for this building and um, with these really big windows um, which we do custom with archways i really like these archways for stuff like this although their scale isn't always <laughs> exactly what we need for a build like this but i think um, i think it worked out fine and then i just do some custom windows in there as well and then the rest is pretty much built with um, basic shapes and uh, wall pieces. Well, no, it's built with wall pieces actually. This, um, so I managed to get everything sort of in a nice grid space so that it's easy to build. Um, and there's not really much more to it. This building is very simple, very, uh, very basic. Just a nice way to cover up the wild mouse station there, and. Um, not much more theming goes into this wild mouse either to be honest I could have done a bit more with it but I decided in the end that we're just going to keep it simple um, I do stick a tower in over near the back of it as well just to 
sort of draw that theme out from this building a little bit further. Uh, but yeah, like I say, there's not an awful lot to it. So yeah, just really finishing off this building. Um, and this, again, it's quite a tight space we have to work with here. So um, I couldn't do too much with that. And then you can see I'm duplicating across the windows from the front and sticking them on the back, but I don't think that worked. I think I had to recreate them. Yeah, you can see me building it again here, which is very frustrating <laughs> when things just don't blueprint. If only you could blueprint stuff to a sort of two, four or eight grid space, that would be so ideal. Um, Hopefully someone comes up with a mod <laughs> that allows different blueprinting, but I don't know if that's something that would work in the game engine really, to be honest. So yeah, that's um, that's everything there, just adding some little sort of windows. I almost think this has got a bit of a gothic feel to it, this building as well, which I think sort of links in quite nicely with some of the theming that we've got around the park. I think it all um, ties in nicely together. Um, I actually really like some of the theming that I put into this park. Um, it's just a bit different and like I say, not something that I've particularly worked with before. Uh, but I think it all yeah ties in pretty well. Even though we've got slightly different themed areas. This building and such isn't really in a themed area. It's uh, it's just one of those sort of go-between rides. And if this was a real park... You know, unless it was a Disney park or something, you probably wouldn't see this much theming on the station of a wild mouse. Um, there, don't get me wrong, there probably are a few exceptions. I'm sure there's a, a park in Europe that's got a really well-themed um, Gerschlauer wild mouse, I believe. I can't remember which park it is, but I'm sure someone in the comments down below will know. Moving on then to this sort of uh, waterfront area and I really didn't know what to do here so I just thought I'm going to use some slightly different paths to make things interesting and have just a nice seating area and some foliage um, and didn't really have much space to fit a ride in comfortably um, so I thought this would be the best sort of way to do that and I couldn't decide on the fences at the front um, so in the end I extended it out a bit further and just used some wall pieces instead and I think that worked out really nicely. So you get some nice views over the water there. You can sit down and sort of take a breather. I think it's nice to have some open sort of seating places in parks. I think that's something that sometimes I lack and I should do more of because I really like the way that looks. And I think that would be quite believable in a real park as well. Um, you'll notice as we go through the park as well, I'm trying to combine some of the sort of greener trees with the... Um, with the autumn leaves colour trees um, and you know the greens I'm using are still a sort of more of a dead green not like a summer green if that makes sense so they're a bit more yellowy like a little bit more off colour um, so I think it works out and it's believable enough. Moving on then to the original um, steel coaster the dueling coaster station and I wanted to make this a sort of church really <laughs> um, almost inspired by the build that I did for the the last coaster B diorama that I did um, with, with the um, the RMC build um, I just built a church layered up um, with lots of different parts and plenty of room for the uh, queue lines and for the coaster itself because obviously these dueling coasters, the station and all the queues you need do take up quite a big blueprint so I had to cover it up without making the building look too blocky um, but this is one of the more basic buildings in the park and yeah I'm quite happy that this one isn't anything too crazy I think it works out absolutely fine looking like this and then just blueprinting a load of shapes and putting them all over the building and then some windows and some borders and just stuff like that really just some very basic details um, it didn't have to be anything too spectacular because um, I didn't want anything to take away from centerpiece building and to be honest I didn't want to spend <laughs> too much time working on this one but yeah I'm uh, 
happy that I was managed that I managed to replace the building that was already there. I wasn't sure if it's actually deletable because there's some buildings in the park that were already there that you can't get rid of, but I think that's just because they're out of the park boundaries, such as the depot. Uh, buildings like this, I was able to remove. Um, I think it would have been a real challenge to try and build something around the, the theming that was already there, and so I'm glad that I was just able to delete that and start again with my own thing here and to be honest there's not an awful lot more that I can say about this church station it's um, just a case of filling in all the gaps it takes a little bit of a while because there's so many parts to it so you have to just keep blueprinting and copying across and yeah it's stuff like this gets quite tedious sometimes in the game um, when you're building a larger sort of building like this and then this is the best I could do a, a church uh, window which I guess um, you know has that certain shape to it which you can't really get that well in vanilla so I just do it the best I can with standard windows and uh, all stacked up and the cylinder shape as well there and yeah that's um, that's this building nearly completed, just stick some nice church doors in there. Uh, we've got a little outside section of this queue as well, which I think works quite well. Um, and yeah, I've <laughs> I struggled a little bit there with that queue line actually to get it to get it to connect up. I had some sort of problems with I'm not quite sure why that was, but yeah, that's uh, that's that for that section of the park. And we come on to the third and final well, sort of final themed area for the park and this is sort of an idea really that I nicked from one of Silverette's videos um, where he basically built a brand new section of the park um, that would be built sort of years after the original park and the original rides were put in so all this theming is much more modern and much more minimalistic and that's the only way I could really think to theme this area. It doesn't tie in very much with the other area of the park, or the other areas of the park rather, but because it's right around the back um, and it's sort of separate to the rest of the park, I think it works fine. Um, I didn't want to go for like a space or future theme or anything like that. Um, I just wanted to go for a very sort of generic modern build. Um, it's not my favourite theming I've ever done. Um, I can't even say it's that good to be honest, but it just works fine for this area. Um, also doing the same with the foliage. Um, the the autumn leaves colour trees don't really work for this area, so I'm just using sort of standard um, green trees. But they're planted more sort of symmetrically if that makes sense. So it's like they've planted them on purpose rather than building around what's already there like in the rest of the park. Um, we're also using more curved paths as well, uh, which is a trick that I actually saw Astrotron do um, in in one of his videos, where you can use um, basic shapes to create a curved path there, and I think that looks really cool. And that's probably something that I'll start doing in more parks actually, because I think that works really well, um, and it's a good way of doing it in vanilla and still getting that sort of realistic looking curved path. For the uh, b and station here, just kept it very, very simple. Um, just using basic shapes, it's all in this blue colour. And then I just use some slightly darker blues for the roof using the steel um, stuff. And I think, I can't remember what I put here, I think, yeah, I think I put some glass roofs on as well, just layered them up to make the glass a bit darker. Um, not sure if this is something you see very often on coaster stations, a glass roof, but I think it works fine for a more modern build. Um, and then I just had to cover up the station platform with some basic shapes so that it doesn't look so orange. And that's pretty much it for this build. Uh, the last theming for the park come together really quickly. So we'll now take a look at the park and I'll see you over in the final tour. Welcome to the Batavia Cake. 
Um, as you can see, we've now got an entrance building, which we didn't have before, and which you haven't seen me build. Um, I just built this off camera at the end, because to be honest, I completely forgot um, that I wanted to have an entrance. So it's very basic, almost a bit gothic looking, um, using some of the same architectural styles as the main street buildings, but obviously with a different sort of darker roof color. And I think that works really well, it's introducing people to this park. So the first thing that we see as we come in then is this nice little main street. Um, and I, I think this really sets the tone for the park as well. I really like how this composition looks, especially with the autumn trees here as well. Um, and the merry-go-round sort of complements it nicely as well. And then the first thing that you'll see as you come in is the, uh, the helixes of this coaster, which I can't really take credit for, I guess. Um, and our Dracula's Castle building, which I'm really pleased with how the whole composition came together. So let's just zoom out a bit so we can take a uh, take a better look at that. And um, yeah, I just think it works really well with this coaster. As you can see, we sort of go around the back, and uh, it's much more backstagey. This is a bit that I wouldn't want people to see. Um, so we've covered it all up nicely. There's a bit of fog in there to um, to hide everything from view of people riding the coaster as well. So you don't really see too much of that backstage. Yeah, if we if we go to the left first, and then that way we can ride the original dueling coasters at the end of the tour. Uh, the uh, first ride we've got on the left here is the chair swing. And then we've got our wild mouse. So let's take a little ride on that. I've called it flying turns. I didn't give it a sign because the name's just terrible. And I couldn't really think what to call it. Um, here's the stats for anyone that wants to see them. So yeah, high excitement, medium intensity. Not bad for a, uh, for a wild mouse. And it's a really, really standard wild mouse layout. Just with this sort of back and forward section that they all tend to have at the start. I um, really don't know why there's so many of these rides. I guess it's because they're cheap coasters, but they're really not good coasters. They're good to build in Parkitect though, because they're a cheap way of making some money. Uh, but then we go for the sort of more Gershlau uh, Wild Mouse style with the uh, bigger helixes and stuff into a couple of tight turnarounds and into the brake ones, so nothing too crazy there. And we've got our sort of Gothic type building here. It's the station for that one as well so yeah i'm quite pleased with how that turned out um, as we carry on through the park then um, here is our sort of abandoned or renovated uh, building that's being worked on uh, that's part of the theming by the way it's not supposed to suggest that there's uh <laughs> that they're still working on this just notice that there's some original fences here now so i'm just going to quickly take them out there we go, that looks better. Um, and this is what I'd call the sort of family section of the park with a couple of kids' rides. So we've got the pirate ship, um, the bigger kids' ride, and the teacups, um, which is a good family attraction. And also our uh, double Ferris wheel here, which I really had no idea what to do with. So I just put some really basic um, walls and stuff around the edge. And then we've got our toilet block here, which you haven't seen me build either. I built that right at the end. Uh, but that's very simple as well. Uh, quite like how the teacups looks here, nice and hidden by the foliage, uh, almost sort of, almost like it's in a small forest or something. Over here, then we've got our little harbour section um, crammed into this corner of the park, and yeah, I'm pleased with how this one looks as well. Uh, just enough clearance here for the wing coaster to go through the top of the building, and I think it makes quite a believable little harbour section here um, and then you can see I've got the sign here for shipyard um, kept it very basic just a simple sign and all our shipping containers here for the station as well I also added some of these uh, barriers as well around the edge which I think look pretty cool and um, yeah I'm pretty happy with those 
Um, so let's take a ride on the shipyard. Here are the stats. We've got an extreme excitement of 84.6. That's really good. And a high intensity of 71. So we've got a train ready to leave. Let's hope that it goes quickly so that we're not sat here for ages. Here we go. So straight into the first launch, or the launch rather, and into these various inversions that I'm not going to try and name again. <laughs> I'm terrible at naming inversions. Um, but yeah, lots of sort of looping, intertwining track here that I think works really well together. Um, and some big corkscrews as well, I quite like them. We do have a mid-course there, a brake run just to add more trains onto the track really and slow it down a bit to get the pacing right there. Uh, some nice helixes here, unfortunately that sort of straight bit of track there doesn't look very good. This corkscrew is very very slow um, but it's just the only thing I can do really to fit everything into the layout. And then there's a barrel roll type thing at the end or zero G roll whatever it is uh, to finish on as well. So yeah, I think that's a nice wing coaster layout there. I'm pretty happy with how that one turned out. We've got a um, we've got a super looper type ride here as well. Um, what's this one called? Inverted double swing. Um, I, I basically added no theme into this. Just give it some. Uh, just gave it some very basic queue line fences and stuff. This is probably a ride that they added to the park. A little bit later on then we come over to the new section of the park and uh, the more modern themed area this here is a sort of restaurant building with a couple of stools in it and we've got some nice seating as well just outside there and then like I say everything for this area is very uh, minimalistic so we're just using some um, half roof pieces here to build some sort of cover for this path for the top spin and some nice orderly lined up trees there <laughs> then we've got a little toilet block here again with a very modern feel to it I've tried to cover up this as well because there's an underground section here for the haulers to get to the staff room I believe um, but we'll just ignore that pretend it's not there uh, this goes to I called Vertical then, uh, sorry Vertigo, this is the uh, B&M Flawless Coaster. I quite like how this sign turned out. I added a smaller text sign over the top of a bigger one, I think it works out quite well. Uh, so let's have a look at the stats for this one then, we've got again an extreme excitement of 82.6, medium intensity for this one 54.4 and let's take a ride on it. It's a small little uh, curve drop there into the lift hill, uh, which I'm going to speed up a bit because we're short for time. And then we come into the first drop. Just going to zoom out a bit. There we go. Um, and into a uh, um, what do you call them? Bat, um, not a bat wing. Well, I can't remember the name of that one. Um, Cobra roll, that's it, Cobra roll into a vertical loop and unfortunately we've got really bad operations in this one because it's stopped on the brake run. I'm sure before I had the timing on that much better so I'm not sure quite what's gone wrong there. Uh, but then the second half of the layout is just some nice helixes. I think it's because the second half of the layout is a fair bit longer um, than the first half. We do this nice diagonal corkscrew which I like as well. But the pacing on this second section really isn't that great. Uh, if you know, if this wasn't finished, I could probably go back in and change it. It's not the best layout I've ever done, uh, but it looks nice enough. I'm happy with it. Uh, and then you can see I've just put a little bit of a cover on the brake run there. I just wanted to give that a bit more interest, and there's a transfer track in there as well. Um, I probably should have covered up the queue a bit more actually um, and that's something that I might go back in and do just for my own sake uh, just maybe in some sections put a little bit of roofing on because if it does rain you're going to get very wet there in that queue 
But um, moving on, um, we've got a Gravitron here, which is the last ride in this modern sort of section. That's one that I just chucked in to make the goals. And we come to the dueling coasters. I think we'll just ride one of them. Um, so there's no point in riding both. And as you can see, the uh, station here looks really nice. It's a church. I've added some little details to the roof as well. I'm quite happy about uh, for those of you that want to see the stats, it's got an 84.9 excitement, 49.8 medium uh, intensity. I'm sure both are about the same, but again, I can't take credit for these because I didn't build them. But they are very nice coasters. What I did want to do, actually, is change the sort of definition of the first drop and make it a bit steeper. But you're not allowed to uh, hit this coaster. The game doesn't allow you to. So we just kept it as it is, and I have to say the dueling element on these coasters is fantastic. Um, it's kept extremely well synchronised through the whole layout, and it just looks so cool going through that building. I really, really like how that looks. Definitely my favourite part of the park. That one, and it sort of um, meanders throughout the whole park. Really, you get. A bit of a view of everything from this coaster and I think this is what made the goals not too difficult to meet the fact that this coaster was in already because we were able to charge £15 for each coaster and they always seem to have full trains so yeah it's quite easy to make money off this one actually and then finally we come to our nice seating area here a wipeout next to it and I like the, really like the colour of that wipeout actually I wasn't too sure when I first put it there but it's, it's grown on me that um, it's just got a little simple cover there as well. So let's zoom out and take a look at the park in full. As you can see, the theming at the front is much better than the theming at the back, uh, which is very basic um, over here, but that's exactly how I wanted to do it. I wanted to keep this a new section in the park that maybe in a few years' time they work on more. So let's just zoom in a bit to this area and let's take a quick look at night as well. So very basic lighting where it's needed um, on all the paths and sort of on the building. As you can see, I've used some mood lighting to decorate the front of this. I can imagine they could do some really cool light shows and stuff like that on here if it were a real park. That'd be really fun. But yeah, that's it for uh, Batavia K. So what we're going to do is just save them. We'll go back to the map. So I'll see you there. Okay, that's Batavia OK completed. And next up, well, we've got, a, <laughs> I would say we've got a choice of two, but you can see that we've already started playing through these ones before. Um, so I think what we're going to do next is Ice Shelf Islands, as it could be either a Christmas theme or a nice winter theme as we're coming into that season. So I'll see you all in the next one. Thank you for watching.